Okay, we are good. Okay, so I can start now. You guys ready? This is Lindsay with Tasteful Selections and she will talk to you about the program and her position. Okay, Take can everybody hear me and see my screen? Yep, I see someone shaking their head, okay. So like Romy said, my name is Lindsay Mabin and I work for Tasteful Selections. We are a grower, packer, and shipper of bite-sized potatoes um, based out of Arvin. Um, I'm sure you all know where Arvin is, so don't have to explain that. Um, if you guys do have any questions, um, you can either physically raise your hand um, and unmute yourselves or in the chat, however is easiest for you guys. Um, so a little bit about who we are, like, like I said, we, um, we grow, pack, and ship bite-sized potatoes. So the smallest potatoes that we sell are about the size of a marble, and the biggest we sell are just um, smaller than a baseball. So everything we do is very small scale um, as far as the potato size goes. So we are a family, family farm with one goal, and that's to grow potatoes that fit today's busy lifestyle and taste great. Um, so back in the day, um, a lot of people, you know, the, the mom stayed home, dad worked. So the women had a lot of time to, to cook dinner and spend hours. And nowadays people just, that's not the case anymore. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of families, everybody works. So we tried to create a product that is very fast and easy to cook, but still very nutritious. So that's why our potatoes are so small. Um, our company started as a vision by Midwestern potato farmers. They came from uh, Nebraska and they mostly grow potatoes for chips. Um, and then they found that the smallest potatoes were kind of getting left in the field and, and people didn't really know what to do with them. And so, you know, my boss would walk behind the harvesters with a bucket and fill a bucket with these tiny potatoes. And that's what they'd eat for dinner. And they said, you know, there's gotta be a market for this. So they um, decided that Nebraska was not the place for that, that they needed to come West. So in June of 2010, Tasteful Selections was born in Bakersfield. We rented a facility on the north side of town off of 7th Standard. Um, so 10 years later, we have built a new facility and we own 47% of the market share. So what that means is of 100% of the potatoes in our category and size, um, we do have presence in all 50 states as well as Canada, and we are in over 15,000 retail stores. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the stores we're in once we get towards the end. Let's see if I can get my computer to work. There we go. So where we are, we are very unique in the sense that we do not have one season. We grow year round. And the way we can do that is we grow in nine different regions across the West. So we will grow a spring crop here in Bakersfield. Our farthest field is um, in Delano, basically on the Tulare County line, all the way down to Lamont. Um, and then in the summertime, we go to Nevada. So we go to Dyer, Nevada, Tonopah, Nevada, Rachel, Nevada, and Winnemucca, Nevada. And those range anywhere from 291 miles to 537 miles one way. Um, so Winnemucca is definitely a, a drive for us. And then we also grow a summer crop in Stockton, California, which is um, about 260 miles away from us here in Bakersfield. And then in the fall, we go down to the desert. So towards the border, we go to Blythe, California, as well as Parker, Arizona, both of which are about 330 miles. And then in the winter, we go to Brawley, which is down on the, um, the California-Mexico border, which is about 315 miles. We, in all those locations, we grow over 15,000 acres of potatoes, and all of those potatoes get trucked back here to Arvin, or Bakersfield, um, to get packed. We only have one packing house, so there's definitely lots of trucking that we do to get our potatoes back here. So a lot of people don't realize um, there are over 100 different varieties of potatoes uh, we grow here. Uh, multiple colors. So what we grow at Tasteful Selections, and you can see in that um, bottom left picture, is we grow red, purple, white, yellow, um, all round potatoes. And then we also grow fingerlings. So they literally look like fat fingers. They, yeah. Um, and we grow those in red, purple, and yellow as well. And then we have an entire team dedicated to research and development. 
So the other picture here in the slide, you can see all those yellow flags and stakes. Um, that is what we call a variety trial. So we will get different varieties from different potato growers or universities that are trying to make the latest and greatest varieties. Um, you want varieties that will do well in storage, that aren't gonna get bruised, they're not gonna be susceptible to disease, um, and they're gonna grow a lot of potatoes. So we will plant trials, and if it makes it through year one of the trial, then we trial it again for another year and another year, and if it survives three years of trials, then we move it into a commercial trial. So these, um, the trials in these pictures, there may be three feet by four feet square or rectangles. Um, if they make it into a commercial trial, we go about an acre. And then if they survive five years of being tested, they actually go into commercial development for us. So it takes quite a bit of, of years and, and work to prove that these varieties are good. Um, one thing that's cool too is our company has, um, we actually own some of the varieties that we grow. So we own um, the rights to growing them, which is good because we consider them to be the best varieties in the market. And by owning them, nobody else can grow them. Um, so that is very helpful to us. Those are just, just some pictures of them. Um, so the start of the potatoes. Uh, some people don't know this, but potatoes do grow underground. They are uh, roughly eight to 10 inches under the soil. We space them anywhere from four to five and a half inches apart. So it's very tight spacing because our potatoes stay so small. Ideally, we want to grow the potatoes in sandy soil. So the reason for that is because the potatoes are underground, when you apply water to the top of the soil, you need the water to get down to the potatoes. Um, so the sandy soil allows for that. And obviously right temperatures and water is crucial. Um, the reason we have to grow in all those nine different regions is you are all very familiar with this valley and Bakersfield Kern County that we live in. Uh, in the summertime, it's way too hot here. Uh, the potatoes basically cook in the ground if it is too hot. Um, so that's why our spring crop, we have to get it out by the 4th of July or else the potatoes just start basically cooking and rotting in the field. Um, and then surprisingly in the winter, it is too cold here, <laughs> if you can believe that. Um, so that's why we go to kind of those higher desert regions in Nevada. Um, and obviously water is very critical to us. Um, it takes, takes water to grow potatoes, so we need that as well. Uh, for planting, we plant by machine. I do have a video, I think it's on the next slide, of what planting looks like for us. Um, we have five planting machines and we have two more coming um, next year. Um, our, both our planters and our harvesters come from Germany, so it's quite a trip to get the machines here and it takes um, a lot of money and preparation to get them. You can't just, you know, go to your local John Deere dealership and buy one. <laughs> you have to plan for that. Um, and then what's also people don't realize is seed potatoes are just like regular potatoes. So you literally take a potato and put it in the ground and it will grow more potatoes. So one thing I always tell people is if you're in the grocery store and you see potatoes that are sprouting, you know, there's little sprouts coming off of them, you could actually plant that in the ground and probably grow more potatoes. Um, and then, so in the picture, you'll see the person holding, he's actually holding a seed piece and then all those little white stems coming off of it, those are gonna be more potatoes. Um, and then our planting crew, they typically average about 50 acres a day that they can, if they're running full bore, um, depending on ideal land conditions, um, if the fields are a little muddy or, or harder soil, it's a little shorter of um, planting, but their goal is to get 50 acres planted per day. And they usually plant five to seven days a week. Oh, sorry, video's not here yet. Um, so these are just some pictures of the equipment. So in the top left picture, those are all five of our machines. Um, they're a pull type, so a tractor has to pull them through the field. Um, the top middle picture, you'll see um, the loader with the red bucket. That's how they load the potatoes into the planter. And then uh, the bottom left picture, that's just the backside of the planter, but I'll show you more of that in the video. And then the bottom middle picture is what we call um, our bed shapers. So you can see in the bottom left picture, it just looks like a bunch of little rows of potatoes. The um, equipment to the right of that will actually make into a bed, which is how we irrigate. So I'm, I'm really hoping that my videos do not crash us here because um, they're kind of big files. So. 
this would be our planting operation. Um, and if you get motion sick, just close your eyes for a minute because it is drone footage, so it makes people a little iffy. Um, so this is a planter. On the front of the tractor, there'll be tanks of liquid, which you'll see sloshing around. Um, that is fertilizer and um, insecticide or fungicide for any diseases that might be in the soil. So the big part where it says Spudnik, we can kind of see the pile there. Those are the seed pieces that are about to get planted. Um, so what will happen, and you'll see it at the front of the machine, is there's a little V-shaped thing and it will open up the bed. Then a little cup will drop the potato into the bed. And then a reverse V-shape is behind it making a mound. So you can see in the video, there's nine different mounds there. So that means there's nine different rows of potatoes. Um, so yeah, sorry, this is where I get car sick watching these videos, but um, so once the, the video or the drone goes to the front, you can see how it plants better, but you'll see between the tire tracks, there's three different mounds, three different times. Um, those will then turn into the beds. So the drone's gonna get to the front of the machine here and then turn around. And mind you, if we were not during COVID, um, we would have been out at the field where you guys could actually get to see this, but unfortunately this is the best that I could do. So, and one thing too is all of our tractors run off of GPS. So yes, there is a person in there, um, but once they start their pass, they are essentially not touching the steering wheel. And the reason we need that is we need very straight lines. And so the GPS can help us with that. Um, we can't eliminate people though, because they are, there's a bunch of sensors and cameras and monitors inside that are watching the planters. Um, so we do still need people. It's not completely automated, but you can kind of see there, the potatoes are dropping down and they're going onto little belts with cups and then the cups are dropping the potatoes in the ground. Um, and I think we're gonna get a close up of the beds. So you can't see it, but there are potatoes under there. And then the next piece of equipment is gonna come in and make those three little mounds into one bed. Um, so that helps protect the potatoes from the elements and it also helps us be able to irrigate um, more efficiently. I'm not sure what the video is going to do. Okay, you just turn around. So that machine in the video, we have five of those and there's another one coming. So that obviously means we're probably going to be growing a few more acres or potatoes in 2021 for the need for seven machines now. Um, when we started, I think we had one or two. Um, Yep, okay, that's the end of that video. So as far as growing the potatoes, um, we irrigate everything with overhead sprinklers. So that means um, it, the water's not coming in underground, it's spraying overhead. Um, the top left picture is one of our um, irrigation systems up in the mountains, um, up near Bishop. Um, so the sprinklers are overhead. And then that middle picture, you can see the stems and then you see all the little red circles. Those are all baby potatoes or bite-sized potatoes. Um, so all of those are little, little baby potatoes that grew off of that one seed piece. And then the right picture is just at a, an, a later stage. So the potatoes get, um, get a little bigger. We want them to stay very small because that's what our market is. Um, they're more valuable the smaller they are. So we have a team that will come in as it gets closer to the end of the season, they come in and do what they call a test dig. So they have this little PVC rectangle. So they are doing the same size every time. They'll put it on the bed. They dig up everything inside the bed. Um, and then they count how many seed pieces they had. Um, and they size all those little potatoes to see if they're at the right profile for us. And I think I have another video next. Yes. So this is during our growing season. Um, that's what the potato field looks like when, the, when they're growing. So obviously the potato part is under the ground and then the plant um, cover is above ground. And then these fields we irrigate with what we call a linear irrigation system. So once the drone turns around, I'll show you that. But um, so you can see that one bed has three different rows full of potatoes. Um, I think the drone's going to get a little closer. It actually gets almost to the ground. Um, 
So we use the drones a lot too during our growing season because you can get up high and you can see where, um, you know, maybe the planters missed or is there a deficiency in nutrients, you know, nitrogen or, or anything. Um, yeah, you can see he's going to get real close here. Um, so that's what they look like um, when they're growing. Um, of course, the fan is the drone um, chopper things. I don't know what you call them, fan blades. Um, and so we'll use the drone a lot so we can see an, an overhead aerial shot because obviously you walking through the field, you can't see everything. And then I think he's gonna turn around here in a second. So these are usually fields that we would probably take you guys to if we were in person, they're very close to our packing house. Um, and you can see between the brown part of the field, um, well, except he passed over it, there's a ditch. So what we do with these fields is the water comes out of the ground and feeds a canal ditch. And then the linear, which we're flying up on right now, um, sucks the water out of the ditch and then feeds the whole irrigation system. So you can see right here, um, we're actually irrigating during this video. And the machines, they, the, um, the irrigation systems, they will set it to put on a certain amount of water, you know, like an inch or half an inch, how long we need it to go. Um, and the machines know where they need to go, when they need to stop, turn, well, not turn around, but reverse back, um, stop the water. And all of that can be done um, by a phone. So it's very cost effective for labor because with the old types of irrigation where there's like the pipes on the ground, um, if you need to move the pipes, it takes five plus people. Uh, this takes one person. So it's very efficient with the labor. Let's see where he's going to go now. Sorry. So obviously this field that's being irrigated, there's no potatoes. The potatoes are in the ground. They just haven't emerged out of the ground. Um, and the sprinkler height is very important too. Um, if you have the sprinklers too low to the ground, once the crop starts growing, if the green uh, cover gets above the sprinklers, not, a, not all the crops can get their water because the sprinklers can get hung up in the plants. Um, but you also don't want them too high because if they're too high, the water might evaporate before it actually gets to the ground. So there's all sorts, it's not just sticking a sprinkler out there. Um, and they can use it too. You can see in this video how there's one part that's really light brown versus a darker brown. So that section might be sucking up the water more. Um, so they, they look at all of those things on our agronomy side. I promise this is the longest video you guys have to watch if you're bored, sorry. Um, so you can see between the brown and the green, there's a canal there. So that's where the water comes out of the ground into that canal and then the irrigation system pulls it. Um, through the sprinklers. So these are some of our bigger fields. These fields are about 120 acres each. Um, and there's, uh, there's three of them here. So we do still use, I mean, we obviously, it takes people to grow our potatoes. So we use a lot of um, farm labor contracted employees. So as far as the safety for them, you can see it in the video, there's a little red and gray um, objects down there. So all of our employees have to be provided shade and restrooms um, and places to take breaks. Our people are very important to us. So we want to make sure that they're taken care of um, and that they have all they need because we, we can't do it without our employees. Um, so you can kind of see the aerial shots. We, our agronomy team is able to see, um, you can kind of see off in the distance there, there's a, I don't know why I'm pointing to it on my screen. You can't see me pointing. Um, there's kind of a big brown spot out there. That probably means that um, there might've been a problem with a sprinkler, like a sprinkler head might've blown off and it could have flooded that part of the field or the planter missed something. Um, there could be a number of um, reasons why that's an issue. So we're very thankful for our agronomist with his drone. Small thing, okay. So now on to harvest. Our growing season is very short. Um, it's 75 to 90 days. So between the first time we put a potato in the ground and the, when we pull it out, it's uh, less than three months. So it's very fast moving. Uh, we keep the potatoes small by stopping the growth of them. Uh, we do harvest by machine. We have four harvesters and we're getting another one in 2021. And the harvest crew can average anywhere from 40 to 85 acres per day. 
So here is, is it playing? There we go. So this is a video of harvest. So we put our potatoes into the trailers like you see there being pulled by the tractor. Um, he's gonna turn around here in a second so you can see it. Um, what the machine, the harvester machine does is it actually digs under the ground, under the potatoes, and then pulls the potatoes and the dirt and everything out of the ground. And then a series of belts will shake all the dirt back out so only potatoes um, go in. So you can see on here, um, the front of the machine is where it's digging up the potatoes. Our machines can do two beds per machine. And then it shakes all the dirt out and goes through a series of turns and adjustments and fills that bunker. So you can see we try and get all the dirt out because um, we don't pack dirt at the packing house, we pack potatoes. So you wanna make sure to try and get as much dirt out as possible and leave it in the field so we're not having to truck it back to Bakersfield or back to the packing house. And these machines, um, they're very large. It takes one semi, but it's a special permitted load. So um, they're very wide and very heavy. So they, they're quite a beast to see going down the road. Oops, that's the same video. Here's a different video. Um, so you can see um, as the machine harvests, it fills with that bunker towards the front where the big yellow belts are. And then the tractor can pull alongside the harvester. So the harvester can load into the trailer while it's moving. Our old harvesters, we could not do that. You had to fill that front bunker and then um, stop and wait for the tractors. So this is a much more efficient um, way to harvest. And we, um, we were the first company in the United States to have harvesters like this. Um, they call them self-propelled, so they're not pulled by a tractor. Um, so we're very excited to be part of that. And now we have four and five of them coming. So I think that should be the end of that video. Yeah. So once the potatoes come out of the field, they go to our packing house, which is here in Arvin, which is where I am located. Um, we opened the facility in March of 2015. Our building is over 389,000 square feet. Um, it is quite large, I would think. It takes quite a while to walk around the facility. Um, we built it from the ground up. We have nine pre-coolers and 11 cold storage rooms. So we can hold over 100 million pounds of potatoes in our, um, our cold storage rooms. When the potatoes come in, um, we ideally, they'll go into a pre-cooler at 55 degrees, and then we will slowly bring the temperature down to 38 degrees. Um, and then optimal humidity to store the rooms at is 95 to 99% humidity. So potatoes are 80% water. So if the rooms are really dry, the potatoes will dry up and they shrivel up and then nobody wants to buy them. So the rooms are very, very wet at times. Um, Everything is fully automated here. Uh, it takes a computer to run most of it along with our people that are running the machines. We have a lot of, of stainless steel LED lights. We recycle our water and cardboard. Um, so we're trying to not have such a big carbon footprint with the environment. Uh, we do have three different wash lines. We just put the third one in. We have 42 holding tanks. So once the potatoes um, come in and get washed, they go into one of 42 tanks and each tank can hold 40,000 pounds. Um, which is over a million and a half pounds of potatoes. Once they go into those holding tanks, they only stay there for about a day before they get packed. Um, we do have 18 different pack lines. Uh, we do have quite a bit of automation. So we have two bag packing robots. So rather than a person having to pick up the bags and put them in a box, we have a machine that does it, um, which I have a video of next. And then we also have um, what we call palletizing robots. So again, instead of a person having to strain and pick up 50 pound boxes, you know, back and forth and stack on pallets. We have a machine to do that now. Uh, we have 10 of those. Um, and then in our facility, the potatoes, they will, they don't drop more than six inches. If the potatoes drop farther than that, they typically bruise and nobody wants to buy them. And then as far as our pack room goes, we pack bags anywhere from four ounces to 50 pounds, depending on the customer. And on average, we ship about 4 million pounds of potatoes per week out of our facility, which is a lot of potatoes. <laughs> um, so these are just some images. Um, the top left picture is, is our facility when it first got built. The top middle is our owners um, at the grand opening. Um, and then just some, some pictures of our pack lines and wash lines. Um, the bottom middle picture is our storage. So that's how we store the potatoes in those white uh, fruit tray bins. If I'm running over on time, 
you can totally cut me off. <laughs> um, so these are some pictures of our pack room. Um, everything is very nice and clean and bright. Um, it actually helps our employees morale. Um, they're very excited to come to work every day. Um, I think they're also very excited because we pack year round. So they don't have to worry about a seasonal job and knowing where their next paycheck is going to come from. As long as they're doing a good job here, we uh, will keep them forever. Um, so we do have some employees that have celebrated their 10 year anniversary this year with us. So it was kind of cool to have the company celebrate 10 years and some of the employees. Um, I was one of them. So it was very exciting. I do have a video. There might be sound on it. So be warned if your speaker is up really loud. They made this video with sound. I don't know why. Of course, I had my speakers too loud. So this is a case packing robot. So he's grabbing the bag. It, it is grabbing the bags and putting them in a box. The engineering team made that. So, oh gosh, no, don't replay that. Um, so as far as our packaging goes, these are all the different types of products we have. So we have any type of bag you can probably think of. Um, the stores that you'll most likely find us in would be Costco, Sam's Club, Walmart, um, Target, most major retailers we are in. Um, I know you guys, um, we gave you guys all a little goodie box. So in that box is, um, what you see in the top left picture here, it's a microwavable tray. So basically you take that tray, um, take that cardboard sleeve off of it and then untape the seasoning packet. And you put that tray in the microwave for five and a half minutes. You take it out, you add some butter or oil and then the seasoning packet, and then you have a ready to go side dish. So we wanted to give you guys something that you could um, actually make our potatoes with. And it's very easy. If you're not good at cooking, this is a great start. You can uh, prove to your household that you can cook. Uh, just hide the tray and they might not know that you microwaved it. Um, and then we also, in your little goodie boxes, we uh, supplied you guys with some recipe cards. Um, I was really trying to do like a cooking class type thing, but the logistics got really messy on our end for that. Um, so we did want to give you guys some recipes so you guys can try different ways to cook our potatoes. Um, it's not just boiling them and adding butter. Um, there's a lot of cool things that you can do with the potatoes. Um, and you can also check out our website. There are a ton of recipes on that website. Um, so this is just a quote from my boss, who is our chief operating officer. He always says that we hope our tasteful selections, bite-sized potatoes will inspire you and your family for many meals to come. Um, and from, from his family to yours. So um, Nathan is our COO, and then his dad, Bob uh, Robert, is our CEO. So we are definitely a family-oriented business. Um, like I said, I actually started, the, the month that I started working at Tasteful Selections was the first month that bags went out the door. Um, and I've been here ever since. So it's, it's definitely been really cool to see the growth of this company, um, the rented facility that we started at, we had like two pack lines and maybe like four tanks. Um, and we were just excited to pack like 100,000 pounds a week. And now we're packing over 4 million a week. Um, so it's really cool to see. Um, I, you know, I was, I'm, I grew up on a ranch um, in San Diego County and was always involved in agriculture. And then I went to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo and got a bachelor's degree in agricultural systems management, which really had nothing to do with potatoes. But um, I found the job at Tasteful Selections online on this website called agcareers.com. Um, I had no experience in potatoes. I grew up with cattle and hay, um, but it was production ag. It seemed in interesting. Um, I was familiar with Bakersfield. Um, you know, Bakersfield is very central. So I thought, yeah, I'm a couple hours from the mountains, a couple hours from the beach, only five hours to go back to my family. Um, and so I just kind of took a shot and they seemed to like me and I've been here ever since. Um, there, there's, let's see, when we started, there were maybe 10 of us on the Tasteful Selections payroll and maybe 50 people on contract payroll. Um, and now there's I think there's 150 of us on Tasteful Selections payroll and um, over 900 people on our, on our contract labor payroll. So we definitely have grown significantly um, and it's been cool to be part of the ride. Um, we do have some internship opportunities. If you guys, um, you are interested, 
Um, the best way to do that is uh, go to our website. We have a careers tab, and then there's an email you can send. Um, if you're interested, we have all sorts of opportunities, whether it's um, if you want to be on the farm side in, you know, the equipment shop or planting or harvesting, um, if you want to be in agronomy and water, if you want to be here at the packing house, you know, we have lots of opportunities with engineering and maintenance and production, um, even finance and HR. I mean, someone's got to pay the bills and, and deal with all the invoices and, and also all the people. So that's why we have HR. Um, so there's definitely lots of opportunities. Um, if you guys are interested in that, um, like I said, you can go to our website. Um, Romy does have my contact information. So if you guys do have any additional questions, you are more than welcome to email me. Um, I wish we were in person because I don't know about you guys, but I don't like Zoom calls. It's more fun to see you guys in person and let you see everything for yourselves, but this is the best we could do. Um, so hopefully you guys do like the little goodie boxes we sent you all. Um, we wanted to give you guys some tasteful selection stuff so you remember us and, you know, maybe when you're in the grocery store, you'll see our label now and, um, and help support our business so we can, we can keep feeding people. So I, that's all I have. I know it's um, three o'clock, but if, if you guys have any questions, shoot them at me. If I don't know the answer, I'll figure it out and let, uh, let Romy know so she can pass on the answer for you. Perfect. Go for it, Gio. Okay. First of all, I want to say thank you for the goodie box. I thought it was really interesting on what you sent us. And my brother was really excited to see potatoes because he likes potatoes. Oh, good. Okay. And um, I have like a million questions, <laughs> but like I'm going to stick to like a couple of them uh, for time purposes, of course. Um, so there is this thing where last year I was doing a project on potato farmers and um, I couldn't really get a hold of any potato farmers. So I decided to go on with a different local private business away from potatoes. <sighs> but as a potato farmer in interest, which is me, <laughs> How could I start my own farm? Uh, this would include with tools, nutrients, and special materials. Wow, that's a really good question. Um, well, I, I'm sad that you didn't find us to be able to help you with your project, or if you did try and reach out to one of us, no one got back to you. I apologize for that. Um, I think the best thing to do is to, um, you know, find an internship. I think being in this program is a great way um, to start, you know, you guys can make these connections with us through your coordinators, um, you know, get an internship, get a summer. Driving out and checking bug traps or, you know, something, you know, asking, asking a lot of questions to these farmers. Um, you know, most of them are, are very willing to, to show you what's, what's going on. Um, I mean, I, I obviously am a little older than you guys, cause I'm not in high school anymore, but um, you know, we need to teach the next generation of farmers because we're, you know, we're not, a, we're not getting any younger. Um, so I think the best thing to do is to find those internships and summer jobs um, and just ask, ask a lot of questions. I mean, no, no question is stupid. Um, we all had to start somewhere. I mean, I literally, I came from cattle. I knew nothing about potatoes except how to eat them. Um, so we all, we all have to start somewhere. So I, I think that's a piece of advice I can give you for now. <laughs> And if you do have more questions, like you don't want to ask all 50 of the questions you may have written down, um, I give like put them in an email and I can share my email address. Um, actually, I could probably do it in this chat. Um, I can share my email address and you guys can, if I can get my computer to work, um, you guys can um, ask me your questions if you don't want to ask them right now. Keep going. You have more, Gio. I know you do. <laughs> I do, but like, I feel like I'll be wasting time because a lot of the questions I wrote down basically uh, could be answered if I did get an internship there. Like, for example, I did have, by an estimation of how much you spend for your crops, uh, how much product would I have to sell to become profitable in a smaller scale? And like, I feel like if I had the question in that internship, they would answer it. And like, I wouldn't have to be taking up so much time. Um, you can definitely, so I actually don't know the answer to that question, um, but I put my email address in the group chat thing. If you, if you guys want to ask those kinds of questions, you're more than welcome to email me. I, 
I probably don't know all the answers, but I could get the answers. Um, if you, you know, had another school project or wanted to get an internship, we can definitely, um, definitely work on that. So send, send me an email with all of your questions if you don't want to ask them all here. Okay, thank you. I will consider that because I just did like, I just scratched out all my questions. I was like, this is going to no. be so much time. Like, but I can still read them because I remember what half my questions were. Like, what kind of pests and other critters are potato enemies? I write things so weirdly at night. Oh. This was all written last night. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's actually a really great question. Um, most high school kids don't think of things like that. Um, so the biggest pests that we have in the potato industry would be um, a, a disease called nematodes. Um, it's actually in the soil. And what it does is the best way, the easiest way I can describe it is it actually makes the potatoes look like a pickle. So, you know, pickles have like little wart looking bumps on them. Uh, nematodes actually do that to the potatoes. They'll make them have little bumps on them and nobody wants to buy them because they don't look pretty. Um, Another thing I would say is a, a big pest for us would be uh, white flies and tuber moths. So those are both bugs, insects, um, that will eat at the plant and then that will kill the potatoes because there's no more plant up there. Um, other things that we do have to fight are um, what they call like black leg. We don't see it as much in the smaller potatoes, but um, the unfortunate part with black leg is it actually makes the center of the potato black and you cannot see it until you cut it open. Um, so we fight that. Um, those would probably be the biggest pests that we fight. Um, there, there are ways to fight the pests. Um, we, do, we do use pesticides. We do have some organic fields too. Um, so we have ways to fight the pests that way. Um, we also deal with pests in the form of weeds. We have some uh, weeds and grasses called nuts edge. And what that does is it's, it's grass. You probably, I have it in my front yard really bad, um, but it's a weed. And the problem with those is they grow next to the potatoes. Well, those weeds are taking all the nutrients that the potatoes need. So those plants will steal the nutrients and the water from what needs to get the nutrients in the water. Um, so we, we use pesticides or, um, why can I not think of the word? Um, fungicides and herbicides, there we go, um, to kill those, those bad weeds off. Um, in our organic fields, we actually use uh, fire. We use propane and flames to burn the, potato, burn the um, weeds down. So yeah, that was a really good question. I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> He's got all the questions. Now no one else wants to ask any. <laughs> I have one. Okay. Um, how do you guys process your drinks? Our what? Your drinks. Drinks. What do you mean by drinks, Amber? Yeah. Like, uh, like the smoothies and all that stuff. Oh, on the cup? That was just a cup they gave us their name on it. You might be thinking of Bolt House. Bolt House makes smoothie drinks. We don't do those here. Oh, because they have veggies and stuff, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's probably thinking of Bolt House. Okay. Speaking of the cups from the goodie bags, what was the mesh thingy on the lid? Oh, that little, like, green wheel looking thing? So Yes, I, yes. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Um, so that's like if you were going to put like a powder or something in with the water, it helps um, so it doesn't like clump up. If you use like protein powder type stuff um, or like we use um, like powder lemonade in those. So you put that in there and it's just supposed to help keep um, if you do mix powder in with your water or whatever, um, keep it from clumping up. No, yeah, I was just confused because um, for those things. I'm usually used to this like little ball that's little like really ball, yeah. yeah yeah it's it's a different type of of contraption in there rather than the ball but similar concept yeah it was it was pretty um it was nice yeah it was different and I like it at least oh good I'm glad you guys like it we wanted to give you guys some stuff because 
We understand that the Zoom thing isn't the most ideal situation, but we wanted to try and make it as special as possible for you guys since everything is on a computer, so. Are there any other questions? I, I thought it might have been something so you can hold with your team. Oh, okay. um, I was wondering what type of water did you guys use for your potatoes? So most of our fields, we use groundwater. So we're pumping water out of um, underneath the ground. Um, in some of our desert regions, like down in the Imperial Valley, where we're um, down by the border of Mexico, we will use um, canal water. So that's actually coming out of the Colorado River. So they call that surface water. It's coming um, out of the river and delivering to the fields. But most of our water is coming out of the ground. Thank you. You're welcome. Go for it, Amber. I know you had a question. Now she doesn't want to ask it. No, it wasn't a question. Because uh, it was what Gio said. I thought it was something that you can, like, hold it with your tea. I don't know if you guys make any tea, but, like, I just thought it was that. Oh, in the cup. No, it probably would hold, like, a tea bag if you put it in there, right? Probably. Okay, any other potato questions? I know Gio has a list. He's going to email you. That's fine. <laughs> ask him up. Yeah, I see his notepad. <laughs> you guys ask questions. You guys are getting gift cards. Yeah, you all asked questions, so that's awesome. A lot mm -hmm. of times we get groups of kids that have zero questions. Um, so I appreciate you guys with your questions. Um, hopefully I didn't bore you too much with my little spiel, but um, we do really like to share our story and teach people what we do, what we do here. Um, and potatoes aren't just boring things that you mash and add gravy to. Um, they can be very exciting. So I hope you guys do all cook the little tray of potatoes we gave you um, and show your families that you can cook if you maybe don't normally cook. Um, but yeah, if you guys do have any other questions, my email is in the chat. Um, you can check out our website. There's tons of recipes and all the different product lines so you can see it um, and then recognize it in the store and buy our products because that's always good for us and business. Um, and then, yeah, there's a careers tab. So if you don't see an internship posted, you can always email. Um, I, think the, I think it's careers at tastefulselections.com. Um, you can always email that um, with any internship questions or if you guys have any school projects where you want to talk about potatoes, you can email there or email me um, and we can point you in the right direction. Perfect. Question. Go yeah. for it. Why are some potatoes smaller than the like other potatoes? Because some of them like grow really big. Yeah, so um, some of them, we, we tend to keep our potatoes on the smaller side because they will cook faster. So we don't grow the big um, like russets like you're used to seeing where they're, you know, big, huge potatoes. Um, and the way we keep them small is we actually stop them from growing. So we kill the plant and then the potatoes will stop growth. Um, so yeah, we, we try and keep them small because they cook faster um, and are easier to maintain for the consumers. Great question. Okay, any more? We are at over. Yeah, we're over. That's good, because I thought I wasn't going to have enough to say. <laughs> yeah, no, you had a lot of content. That's good. You got to see it all. Next year, we'll be able to come in person, hopefully. Yes. So, okay, if you guys have any other last-minute questions, speak up, or you guys can email her with any questions. Yep. Uh, just to throw it out there, my dad used to uh, used to work for Bolt House. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. We actually have quite a few um, between Bolt House, Grimway, and Tasteful Selections. There's quite a bit of crossover. People they're very similar um, operations, so we we get quite a few people that have worked in those operations. So that's cool. Awesome. Okay, well, I think that is it for today. Okay. Hopefully you guys eat all your yummy potatoes. I got to cook mine. I'm excited. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Lindsay. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Perfect. Thank okay. you. Bye. Right, bye, guys. Bye.